Alright guys, Simon here. We're playing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and we are looking at old Roman architecture. And I think today is a good day to look at this weird ass pyramid in the walls. Why is there a pyramid in the walls? Alright, so let's look this up. So today, actually, we're gonna look at the pyramid. We're gonna go look at a bunch of the old baths, the Roman baths, and then we're gonna look at the mausoleum of Augustus, and then I believe that will be all the architecture that I care to look at. Alright, so let, let's go look in the database and see what the uh, the database has to say about this thing. Uh, not documents. About this thing. If I can find it. So we are gonna skip some of the, the buildings in this game. Let's see, the, pyram the Pyramide Sestia? Uh, this giant tomb was built between 18 and 12 BCE for Caius Cestius, who was both a magistrate and member of the Roman religious corporation known as the Septemviri Epulonum, which was in charge of creating religious feasts for the gods and distributing swag during parties. During the construction of the Aurelian Wars between 271 and 275, the pyramid was built into the bulwark, forming a triangular bastion in an effort to cut costs on the snowballing war project. I see. So in order to save a little bit of stone in the wall, they put it through the pyramid. You'll notice the faces of the pyramid are far steeper than its Egyptian ancestors. It is, this is attributed to erroneous sketches of the Egyptian pyramids, which acted as the chief reference for its construction. Okay, so apparently uh, it's, it's in the walls because saving money. Uh, let's see if we can... Cestius Pyramid. Is that how you spell it? The Pyramid of Cestius. So uh, it actually does look like that in real life, but it's actually quite a bit bigger than the walls. Wow, hey look at that. Let's go to images and look at how big it is compared to the wall. Those are the turrets of the wall. The wall only goes up to about a third of the, of the entire height of the pyramid. The pyramid's actually kind of massive, isn't it? Look at... Well, actually, it's not that big. So there's a people. There's a, those are cars. Cars, people, and pyramid. Um, it's fairly large. Let's just check this in the game again. Somewhat bigger than in the game, I think. Yeah, quite a bit bigger than in the game, though. Person, so actually, there's even two... Three. Let me just just kind of try and measure how big this thing is. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. About the height of fourteen people. And if we go fourteen times. 1.7 equals 20, 24 meters or so? 24 meters or so? How big is it in the game? Can't really tell though. So I'm about that tall. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 blocks tall. And so it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, actually, it's not that much smaller, is it? It's actually not that much smaller, huh? Maybe I'm counting this wrong. It seems much bigger in the picture, right? Than it does in the game. Maybe I'm just counting it wrong. Or maybe it's uh, maybe the texture isn't consistent. Like the bricks are probably not consistent. 
anyway. Alright, let's see what Wikipedia has to say about it. Uh, the Pyramid of Cestius is an ancient pyramid in Rome, Italy, near the Porta San Paolo, pa Paolo and the Protestant Cemetery. It stands at, the f at a fork between two ancient roads, the Via Ostiensis and another road that ran west to the Tiber, along the approximate line of the modern Via della Marmorata. Due to its incorporation into the city's fortifications, it is today one of the best preserved ancient buildings in Rome. Also, it's a pyramid, and pyramids tend to be easy to preserve. Like a, a triangle is inherently stable, whereas if you have columns and beams, they tend to fall down in a pyramid. I mean, in, in an earthquake, whereas pyramids tend not to fall down as easily. I think that contributes to the preservation of this thing. Uh, physical attributes. The pyramid was built about 18 BC to 12 BC as a tomb for Gaius Cestius, a magistrate and member of one of the four great religious corporations in Rome, the Septimiri Epilonum. It is of brick-faced concrete. Co oh, it's brick-faced concrete, so the interior is concrete. Uh, covered with slabs of white marble standing on a travertine foundation. So not only is it a pyramid, it's also solid concrete, which kind of explains why it's so well preserved. Uh, it is standing on a travertine foundation, measuring 100 Roman feet square at the base, and standing... Wait a minute, 35? It's for 37 meters high? Oh, I'm way off. I am way off. Huh. I am... 15 meters or 14 meters off. Wow, I'm just really bad. Or maybe those guys were like kind of short. What if they were only... No, that's not right. That can't be right. It's even smaller. Alright, so I'm completely wrong with that estimate. Um, the interior is... the In the interior is the burial chamber, a simple, simple barrel-vaulted rectangular cavity measuring 5.95 meters long, 4.10 meters wide, and 4.8 meters high. When it was rediscovered in 1660, the chamber was found to be decorated with frescoes which were recorded by Pietro Santi Bartoli, but only the scantest traces of these now remain. There was no trace left of any other contents in the tomb which had been plundered in the antiquity. As, as usual, the tomb has been sealed when it was built with no exterior entrance, it is not possible for visitors to access the interior. Except by special permission, typically only gain or only granted to scholars. Yeah, the thing with frescoes is that the frescoes I've explained this earlier is that basically they, it's painted into the wet plaster, and the problem with that is is that as the plaster decays over time, the painting just also disintegrates along with it, and then I mean, plaster th doesn't last forever, and so frescoes also do not. Uh, inscriptions. A dedicatory inscription is carved into the east and west flanks of the pyramid, so as to be visible from both sides. It reads, Gaius Cestius, son of Lucius of the Gens Pobila, member of the College Epulonis, Praetor, Tribune of the Plebs, September of the Epulonis. What does that mean though? What are those guys? Uh, below the inscription on the east-facing side is a second inscription recording the circumstances of the tomb's construction. This reads, This work was completed in accordance with the will in 330 days by the decision of the heir Lucius Pontus Mela, son of Publius of the Claudia and Paul House Friedman. Wait, what? What does that even mean? Friedman means they used to be, a, used to be slaves, but they were freed. Um, I'm not sure what that means though. Another inscription on the east face is of modern origins, having been carved on the orders of Pope Alexander VII in 1663. Reading something, it commemorates excavation and restoration work carried out in and around the tomb between 1660 and 62. So in restoring the pyramid, he carved into it. Not sure if the uh, if the meaning of restoration was quite the same back then. 
That's more like graffiti. Anyway, at the time of its construction, the Pyramid of Cestius would have stood in open countryside, tombs being forbidden within the city walls. Rome grew enormously during the Imperial period, and by the 3rd century AD, the pyramid would have been surrounded by buildings. Oh wow. Wait, really? Oh, I mean, there's this one and a half million people in Rome. So apparently this whole area would have been filled with houses. Um, it was it originally stood in a low-walled enclosure flanked by statues, columns, and other tombs. Two marble bases were found next to the pyramid during excavations in the 1660s, complete with fragments of the bronze statues that originally stood on their tops. The bases carried an inscription recorded by Bartoli in an engraving. Uh, I'm not going to try and read that. This identifies Cestius' heirs or heirs as Marcus Valerius Messala Corvinus, a famous general, Publius Rutilius Lupus, an orator whose father of the same name had been consul in 90 BC, and Lucius Junius Silanus, Silanus, a member of the distinguished gens Junior. The heirs had set up the statues and bases using money raised from the sale of valuable clothes or cloths. My bad. Uh, Cestius had stated in his will that the cloths were to be deposited in the tomb, but this practice had been forbidden by a recent edict passed by the Aedils? Aediles? Who, who are these guys? Temple Building Office. Alright. So the guys who were in charge of building um, temples. So they, they were forbidden to put precious cloths inside the tomb. I guess the idea is like, you, you don't want to lock up all your wealth in a grave. Like You should kind of let other people use it if you're going to die and not going to use it anymore. Not sure if, if that's the reasoning, but that would make sense to me. Um... Pyramid by Piranesi. So the pyramid is really, really, really well preserved. Uh, the sharply pointed shape of the pyramid is strongly reminiscent of the pyramids of Nubia, in particular the kingdom of the kingdom of Miro. Miro. Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know. Which had been attacked by Rome in 23 BC. The similarity suggests that Cestius had probably served in that campaign and perhaps intended the pyramid to serve as a commemoration. His pyramid was not the only one in Rome, a larger one, the Pyramid of Romulus, of similar form but unknown origins, stood between the Vatican and the Mausoleum of Hadrian, but was, but was dismantled in the 16th century by Pope Alexander VI, and the marble was used for the steps of St. Peter's Basilica. Some writers have questioned whether the Roman pyramids were modelled on the much less steeply pointed Egyptian pyramids, exemplified by the famous pyramids of Giza, However, the relatively shallow Giza-type pyramids were not exclusively used by the Egyptians. Steeper pyramids of the Nubian type were favoured by the Ptolemaic dynasty of Egypt uh, that had been brought to an end in the Roman conquest of 30 BC. If you guys don't really know your, your kind of European history, the Ptolemaic dynasty was Greek, so Alexander the Great conquered Greece and then continued south and east and conquered Egypt and then conquered Persia and so on and all the way up to um, to India. And so then after Alexander the Great died, his generals split up the empire between the four of them. And then the Ptolemaic dynasty was one of them and he, he was the guy who got um, Egypt. And so Egypt was ruled by a Greek family, although they kind of the, the Egyptians kind of just treated them as, as more pharaohs, but, but they were Greek. Um, and then the Romans started to get big, and they, and they conquered the Greeks, and then they eventually conquered Egypt. And so then, so, so it was kind of the Egyptians, and then the Greeks came in, and then the Romans came in. And the pyramids of Nubia, if you're interested, are somewhat different from the classical or the, the, or the, uh, the well-known Egyptian pyramids. But uh, they also build pyramids, and you can see how they're steeper. They're steeper than uh, the Egyptian ones. And uh, the Nubians... Actually, ancient Kashai kingdoms... 
the Nubians were... Like, like the Egyptians were kind of Middle East and the Nubians, they're like, they're, they're to the south of Egypt. And they were definitely African. Like, really, really African. So the Ethiopians were around there as well. And they, they kind of they, they kind of shared some of uh, Egypt's culture in some ways. Um, so if you're interested, they look like that. So you can see they they're very similar to the Egyptians in many ways. And at various times in history, they were in, they were part of the Egyptian. Empire as well. Alright, so there you go, Nubian Pyramid. Uh, the pyramid was, in any case, built during a period when Rome was going through a fad for all things Egyptian. The Circus Maximus was adorned by Augustus with an Egyptian obelisk, and pyramids were built elsewhere in the Roman Empire around this time. The Felicon Pyramid, Lear. Is that, is that Nietzsche in France? NICE, is that Nietzsche? Uh, was suspected by some to have been constructed by Roman legionaries, legionaries who followed an Egyptian cult, but more recent research has indicated that it was actually built between 1803 and 1812. Ha! During the construction of the Aurelian Wars between 271 and 275, the pyramid was incorporated into the walls to form a triangular bastion. It was one of many structures in the city to be reused to form part of the new walls, probably to reduce the cost and enable the structure to be, to be built more quickly. It still forms part of a well-preserved stretch of the walls a short distance from the Porto San Paolo. I, I see, so not just this pyramid, but a lot of other buildings were built into the walls to save costs. Which is kind of weird, but okay. Uh, the origins of the pyramid were forgotten during the Middle Ages. The inhabitants of Rome came to believe that it was the tomb of Remus, and that its counterpart near the Vatican was the tomb of Romulus, a belief recorded by the Petra by Petrarch. Its true provenance was clarified by Pope Alexander VII's excavations in the 1660s, which cleared the vegetation that had overgrown the pyramid, uncovered the inscriptions on its faces, tunneled into the tomb's burial chamber and found the basis of two bronze statues that had stood alongside the pyramid. So the Middle Ages were kind of stupid <laughs> in the sense that they just forgot everything. They forgot, they forgot all sorts of technology, art, culture, and history. So once the Roman Empire kind of collapsed, people just got stupid. <laughs> I mean, they, they just lost a whole lot of culture. So I don't know. Uh, the pyramid is an essential site for many who undertook the grand tour in the 18th and 19th centuries. It was much admired by architects, becoming the primary model for pyramids built in the West during this pyra period. I don't know pyramids, man. Uh, Percy Bysshe Shelley described it as one keen pyramid with the wedge sublime. All right, whatever. Let's not worry about that too much. All of that. Okay, well there's the pyramid. Comparison of the approximate profiles of pyramid cestias with some notable pyramidal or near pyramidal buildings. Dotted lines indicate original heights where data is available. Really? Huh. Some guy actually went to the trouble of doing all this. So the Egyptians made pyramids. Um, there was there's some South American pyramids too, and then uh, the Romans copied some pyramids. All right, well, if you're interested, you can look it up on Wikipedia. So there's that. Let's go find some baths because bathing. What is that guy doing? Running the hell away. Alright, database, locations. Well, here's, here's the first one Thermae de Caracalla. Caracalla. Uh, between, built between 212 and 216 during the reign of Emperor Caracalla, 
These public baths remain in use until the mid 6th century. The process of bathing was an elaborate one. A typical Roman male began in the hot bath, moved to a tepid bath, jumped into the cold water, then finished in an outdoor pool, all of which allowed the older men visiting the baths ample time for ogling. Yes. Uh, Caracalla had more than just water sports. The larger leisure complex housed an extensive library with equal amounts of Greek and Latin text as well as an extensive gymnasium. In 537, the baths were sacked by the Goths and had their hydraulic installations destroyed, rendering them useless. So uh, the Goths do not believe in bathing and they will destroy your baths. So let's see if we can find this in Wikipedia and also on the map so we can just quickly get to it. Um, baths of... Oh, there you go. That was fast. Alright, maps and Google and Wikipedia. Let's see, it is... Ah... Uh, to the south? Oh, here we go. So there's the Colosseum. It's to the south of the Colosseum. So it should be fairly close. Can we find it on the map in-game? Um... It would be... Oh, it would be here, right? So, so there's the Colosseum. It would be around here. Let's see if we can go find it. Where's my horse? Here you go, magic horse. Come here, come here. Alright, let's go east. So I think I, I mentioned earlier how... And it, it mentions... It will talk in the Wikipedia as well about how important the baths were in Rome and uh, the, the idea that personal hygiene helped keep the city healthy and a lot of the water from the aqueducts went into the baths too so I mean it's not just vanity yeah. and it's not just you know entertainment it actually has some pretty serious health implications where are we? We are not there yet. And after the fall of the Roman Empire, I guess not only the people lost culture and then knowledge, they also lost personal hygiene. Because the Goths don't believe in bathing and destroyed your baths. Um, it's not here, is it? I don't actually know where I'm going. I mean, there's the aqueduct, right? Maybe it, shouldn't it be at the end of the aqueduct somehow? It might not be in the right place in the game too, so it's not really reliable to... You know, use the real world map to try to find this thing. Should it not be at the end of the pyramid? I mean, not the pyramid. At yeah. the end of the aqueduct? Except the aqueducts end there. I don't really know where I am. Because in, in real life, it's just south of the Colosseum. And it looks like that, and I don't remember ever seeing something like that in the game at all, to be perfectly honest. So we might not actually find it in the game because I kind of fail. Wait a minute, is that for real? That seems wrong. Why would the woman be wearing clothing? I thought they loved nudity. Pretty sure they love nudity. This, this can't be right. They should be naked. Um, yeah, no, I don't know where exactly it is in Rome. It should be fairly easy to spot, though. Except it's not in the map, so that doesn't really help at all, does it? Alright, well, let's just, let's just read about it. So, Wikipedia says, uh, The parts of Caracalla in Rome, Italy, were the second 
largest Roman public baths, or thermae, built in Rome between AD 212 and 216, during the reign of Emperor Caracalla, uh, they would have had to install over 2,000 tons of material every day for six years in order to complete it in this time. Records show that the idea for the, bar, for the baths were drawn up by Septimus Severus and merely completed or opened in the lifetime of Caracalla. Uh, alright. There's apparently some sort of dispute between uh, people about how long it took to build. Reconstruction drawing, okay, well that, that's really fancy, that's interesting. There's a big ass dude with his penis hanging out. Awesome. Wanna see that close up? Yeah, I'll pick a picture for you. That's a pretty big dude. Look at those muscles. And uh, yeah, just hanging around with his penis hanging out too. Awesome. Roman baths. So Emperor Caracalla had the complex built as a piece of political propaganda. Romans from every social class enjoyed themselves in the impressive, exquisitely detailed building. Not only did this create a sense of unity, it also improved the public's opinion of Caracalla because they attributed their pleasurable experience and lavish surroundings to him. Original research question mark. Well, it's, I don't know, this seems a bit of a stretch. He built baths for people. Obviously, that would make some people happy. The bath remained in use until the 6th century when the complex was taken by the Ostrogoths during the Gothic War at which time the hydraulic installations were destroyed. Uh, the bath was free and open to the public. The building was heated by a hypocaust, a system of burning coal and wood underneath the ground to heat water provided by a dedicated aqueduct. It's more than that, it's, uh, it heats the concrete as well, so the whole thing, the whole place was just warm as you walk on it. Yeah, so there's, so there's a space underneath the floor where heated air was circulated, so then it warms the concrete, and so you know you get warm feet underneath you, which is kind of awesome. Um, the Aqua Mercia Aqueduct by Caracalla was specifically built to serve the baths. It was most likely reconstructed by Garbridge and Mandeshade to its current place. Okay, I see. So the it was changed afterwards. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, the design of the baths was used as the inspiration for several modern structures, including St. George's Hall in Liverpool and Pennsylvania Station in New York City. Right. The baths were the only archaeological site in Rome damaged by an earthquake. Yeah, why do I need to know that? Uh, baths were originally ornamented with high-quality sculptures. For example, among the well-known pieces recovered from the baths of Caracalla are the Farnese Bull, and Fani's Hercules. Let's go have a look at those. Oh, that, that's this one, the guy with the penis. Uh, and the bull is a bunch of naked dudes wrestling with a bull. Oh, there's a naked woman there as well. Why on earth are these naked dudes wrestling with a bull? Kind of dangerous. Um... Oh, it's a miss. Alright, so it depicts a story. But uh, yeah, naked dudes, alright, cool. And over life-size early 3rd century patriotic figures, one of the one of many statues is the colossal 4 meter statue of Asclepius. That guy, well at least he's not completely naked, although he's showing you his pecs like, right there, you see that? Look at this, look at his pecs. Uh, interior, the Caracalla bath complex of buildings was more a leisure center than just a series of baths. The baths were the second to have a public library within the complex. Like other public libraries in Rome, there were two separate and equal sized rooms or buildings, one for Greek language texts and one for Latin language texts. The baths consisted of a central frigidarium, cold room, uh, under three groin, groin vaults, a double pool, a tepidarium, and a caldarium. So basically just cold, warm, and hot water. As well as two pilastras, gyms where wrestling and boxing were practiced. So naked dudes 
bathing together and also wrestling and boxing naked. Uh, the north end of the bath building contained a netatio or swimming pool. Uh, it was ruthless with bronze mirrors mounted overhead to direct sunlight into the pool area. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, the entire bath building was on a raised platform 6 meters high to allow for storage and furnaces under the building. The libraries were located in Exidere on the east and west sides of the bath complex. The entire north wall of the complex was devoted to shops. The reservoirs on the south wall of the complex were fed with water from the Marcian Aqueduct. Reconstructed floor plan of the building. Don't know how accurate this is, but that floor plan looks pretty amazing. Ah, uh, dimensions, quantities. Somebody did a quantity survey. <laughs> um, the bath company, so it's pretty big. Alright, so I don't think we need to read the rest of that. So it's a pretty big bath, and I'm, I don't know where it is in the game. Hold on, let's, let's go back to the database and see what it looks like in the game. Locations... It looks like that. In the game, I can't... It must be, I can't... I kind of... It must be around here somewhere. I can't believe I would have missed it. Is it... Is it that? It might be that. It might just be at the end of the... Uh, get out, get down, get this, at the end of the aqueduct. Let me check this area. And if it's this if it is this area then it's not all that accurate. Is that it? We can, we can hear the water above from the aqueducts. Let me just run around here a little bit and uh, no this is the forum. This is the Roman forum. So it's not that. What is up here? It might actually be here. If it is this, then it's in completely the wrong place. Yeah, I think this is it. So this is not the right place for it. Let me see. Well, maybe not because it doesn't really look like what we saw in the picture in the game. This is something. And the aqueduct ends here. <laughs> Except that uh sorry about that. Except it doesn't really oh here it is. Is this is this? There's kinda underneath there's tunnels underneath here. I don't know if this is meant to be it. I can't really recognize the ruins. Maybe we should go to the tower and look down. I don't know. I don't know if this is meant to be it. To be perfectly honest. And if it is, then it's incomplete. No, it can't be. It's in the wrong place. It's meant to be here. The Colosseum is way too big. Unless it's... Oh. What? How is it... Okay, well that, that's not in the right place at all. They've put it... Wow, why did they put it... Uh... Okay, well, okay, we we'll, we'll, we'll found it. It's not this. I'm, I'm in completely the wrong place. Let's go over there. <laughs> What is this then? This is... Okay... Alright, so it's that there? Let's try and find it. Medicine is the wondrous art of... Um, well, that means it would be that thing there, wouldn't it? Let's try and climb up from here. Well, I think it's that thing there. And I think I can climb up here. So let's do that. Oh, how about here? 
And then... Oh, wait, well, you can't get up anymore. Alright, let's go around. So... Am I even heading in the right direction? No. Well... Okay, well, no. I don't think... That, why are you doing that? Desmond. Uh, this actually might be the wrong place. I think I'm supposed to go further to the south east. Um, right, that's the wrong place. So the place we actually went, want to get to is... Oh, is, is that it? Is that it? I think that's it. I need a horse. Google horse. Come, no, no, what are you, where are you going? Come here. Then we can jump across here on the horse. Amazing. That's a really brave horse. So, is this supposed to be it? Or am I still in the wrong place? I am kind of in the right place. It's supposed to be, uh, apparently, it's supposed to be that. Whoa. Okay, well, it's supposed to be that. Come on, grab one. Oh. Never mind, don't grab. It's supposed to be this. Okay, I see. Well, there's still water in it. There's no aqueduct here anymore, so I don't know how that works. Alright, so there's like a really small pool. And then... Oh, there's the aqueduct. Oh, there is. And then... Another really small pool, and then another really small pool. So there is kind of pools of water, except that's way too small. There's the aqueduct that brings water here. Although the water seems to disappear in the air. And... The other way! And more pools. Alright, so there's a few pools, so I guess they're pretending that these are the baths. I don't know though, it doesn't look that convincing though, does it? Because in the map, there's all these buildings. It's nothing like the thing in the game, is it? No. It's not really anything like the thing in game. Hmm. Oh well. Alright, so what other baths do we have? Locations. Uh, can I get filter for baths? Bridges, arches, aqueducts, gates, palazzos? No. Alright, so we're gonna find. Uh, this one, Diocletian's Baths. Perched atop the mean Viminale Hill, the Terme di Diocletiano were the most lavish of all imperial baths built during the height of the Roman Empire. Like the rest, they remained operational until Goths cut the Roman water supply in 537. After that, much of the structures were converted into various different spaces, i.e. places of worship, commissioned by the Roman Catholic Church, and today they house a collection of funeral art. Just goes to show you the rest and relaxation lead to sin and death. What? Shut up, Sean. So, alright, the Euclidean Spaths. And I don't remember where they are in game, neither. Ah, uh, so, Baths of the Euclidean Rome. So it's a basilica now. They ch changed it into a church. Apparently it's to the north. Let me see if I can... Images... Wait a minute, it's intact or is that a reconstruction? That has to be a... Wait a minute. That's a church now though. Anyway, we'll see if we can find it. And maps. S 
so this thing. National Woman Museum, Bath of Diocletian. Alright, so we got. Wait a minute, why can't I. Close, okay, close that. So it's been converted into. something else. Wow, look at that. It's been converted into a bunch of churches and whatnot. But otherwise, fairly well preserved because of it. Huh, fascinating. Fascinating. Alright, so where it is? Where is it? It is far to the north of the Colosseum. So, that would be... No. That would be... That. Alright, let's go over there, and I think we should take the sewers. So, here we go. Yes. Yeah, unfortunately all these baths, they've been out of use for so long that there's not much left of them. So you can't really tell how they were back in the day. So there's, there's that, and then there's, well, there's the aqueduct, and a few pools, and don't really know if this is accurate. Probably not. And you know, more pools. Not really big enough. Alright, let's see what Wikipedia has to say. The Baths of Diocletian in Rome were the grandest of the public baths or thermae built by successive emperors. Diocletian's baths, dedicated in 306, were the largest and most sumptuous of the imperial baths. The baths were built between the years 298 and 306. The project was originally commissioned by Maximian upon his return to Rome in the autumn of 298, and was continued after his and Diocletian's abdication under Constantinus, Constantius, my bad, father of, father of Constantine. Although many baths in and around Rome had the same elements, the baths of Diocletian are unique by their size. Uh, the baths occupy the high ground on the northeast summit of the Vimin Vimino, the smallest of the seven hills of Rome, just inside the Aga of the Servian Wall. They served as a bath for the people residing in the Vimino, Quirino, and Esquiline quarters of the city. The Quadrige Paisonis, uh, a second century monument with various reliefs and some private homes, and a relief representing the Temple of Curinus once stood at the site but were demolished to build the baths. The water supply was provided by the Acra Mercia, Marcia, an aqueduct that had long served the city of Rome since the early 2nd century. To properly supply the baths, the supply of water to the city was increased under the order of Diocletian. The baths may also have been may have also been supplied by the Aqua Antonina, Antoniniana, which was originally positioned to supply Caracalus baths in the early third century. Okay. Uh, the baths were commissioned by Maximian in honor of co-emperor Diocletian in 298, the same year he returned from Africa. Evidence of this can be found in bricks from the main area of the baths, which distinctly show stamps of the Di Diocletianic period. These, according to the ancient guidebook Mirabilia Urbis Romae, were known as Palatium Diocletiani. This evidence shows the effect of the massive project on the brick industry in that all work by them was redirected and under control of the emperor. Building took place between uh, the year it was first commissioned and was finished sometime between the abdication of Diocletian in 305 and the death of Constantius in July 306 AD. 
The baths remained in use until the Siege of Rome in 537 with the Ostrogothic kings Vitigus or Vitiges, uh cut off the aqueducts. So see the see the plan in this hold on. So the semicircular thing would be the uh, semicircular thing in the game. That's not very clear, is it? So that semicircular thing, I think, would be. Uh, where is it? Let's see. It's at the back. Like, uh, wait a minute. Where is it? That thing? Wait a minute. Maybe it's not. That looks like it's just to one side of it. So there's that there, and which way would the bard's face? No, what do you? No, it's not that. Um, five and five. I think five corresponds to those things. Oh, I think they do. Except it's not really. Uh, it's not how it is though. And that would be the semicircle, and then. One, two, three, and four would be one, two, three, and four. I don't know. It's not very. Um, the recreation is not very precise, so I don't really know how accurate this is. It's not very accurate. Anyway, the layout. One of the four inscriptions around the main entrance to, to the baths of Diocletian reads translated from Latin. Our Lords Diocletian and Maximian, the Elder and Invincible Augusti, fathers of the Emperors and Caesars, our Lords Constantinus and Maximian and Severus and Max Maximin, noblest Caesars, dedicated to their beloved Romans, these auspicious baths of Diocletian, which the divine Maxim Maximin on his return from Africa ordered to be built, and consecrated in the name of his brother Diocletian, having purchased the premises required for so huge and remarkable work, and furnishing them with the most sumptuous refinement. Cool. The baths take up 120,000 square meters of the of the district, which is about the same size as the baths of Caracalla. The central hall of the baths was 280 by 160 meters. From it were derived plans for the Basilica of Constantine. Really? However, the capacity of the baths of Diocletian was said to be much greater in comparison to the baths of Caracalla. This could be because the entrance and rooms were made larger than its predecessor in block size, which allowed more space and functionality. According to Olympiodorus, the baths were able to hold up to 3,000 people at one time. However, this claim is disputed because Olympiodorus never mentioned how he came about this figure in the first place. Alright. Uh, the vegetarium originates. Uh, the word frigidarium originates from the Latin word frigio, which means to be cold. The prominence of the room and its cold joining rooms show the increase in popularity cold baths had during the early fourth century compared to the hot baths. This also could have been the result of the depletion of the surrounding forest, resulting in a lack of fuel. The vegetarium or Chella Vegetaria consisted of a pool and a host of smaller baths connected to the main room. Water entering the room would come from a pipe or cistern and would exit through a drain within the pool. The water from the pool was thought to have been reused to flush latrines within the complex. Uh, the Vegetarium was used mainly as a swimming pool or a cold water bath depending on the time. Normally one would continue on to the vegetarium after using the hot water bath or after exercising in the palestra. Noting the massive size of the room, it was believed to have also been used as a social room. This idea is supported by the presence of statues and elaborate niches along the walls. On each end of the vegetarium are large shallow pools that were made to be open air bathing pools. Okay. Uh, the the caldarium, the word caldarium comes from the letter wo Latin word kalio, meaning to be hot. It also has roots in the Greek word that means in the most room. The purpose of the caldarium was that of the principal bath chamber within the baths. From its namesake, the room was used for a hot water bath or for saunas or steam rooms. 
The room could also have been used for oiling before or after a bath, but in most cases this was moved to a separate room off the Caldarium. The Caldarium or Cella Caldaria was rectangular in shape, with many octagonal rooms found near it in the corner of the structure. The area seemed to be referencing the older baths of Nero and Titus in its initial design. Uh, what set this Caldarium apart was the sheer scale of the room compared to its predecessors. It continued a basilica-like theme from the Vigidarium with a cross vaulted middle bay and three projecting apses. These architectural techniques created the feeling of a more open space for the patron. No, they just created a more open space. How is it a feeling of more open space if it actually is open space? Um, dressing rooms, also known as Apoditria, Apoditria, were located on either side of the Caldarium. Along the sides of the Caldarium were private rooms that were believed to have had multiple functions, including private baths, poetry readings, rhetoricians, rhetoricians, people who were engaged in rhetoric, basically. Uh, other areas attacked, attached to the Caldarium were a garden, lounging rooms, gymnasiums, and small halls and semicircular extra used as lecture and reading rooms. Okay. Uh, rectangular halls connected to the hemicycle have been suggested to be libraries because of their similar setup in those in the baths of Caracalla. Historians, to support this theory, have demonstrated that these halls with their niches could properly house books from that day. References to the presence of libraries within the baths of Diocletian both confirm and contradict themselves, such as the case of the author of the Life of Probus, in that he mentions that part of the Bibliotheca Opia, which are found in the form of Trajan, are being housed within the baths, a statement he later contradicts when later referenced the Bibliotheca Opia. However, with the presence of similar rooms that suggest they were libraries found in the baths of Caracalla and the Bath of Trajan. It is not a stretch to theories to propose that they are oh, fine, there might be libraries. Uh, architectural styles. Within the Vigidarium, the use of external buttresses for cross vaults were considered by some to be the first example of the scientific system of thrust and counter thrust in architecture. Concerning the baths as a whole, it has been described as evoking the imperial style or a classical image, which is the style of manipulation of space, whatever the hell that means. The manipulation of... To manipulate the space within the style, the forms of the building were simple and gave the impression of a vast amount of open space. The build... Look, they're big baths, alright? You need big rooms for the big baths. How is that so complicated? Uh, the builders of that use different techniques to create this effect. The exterior walls of the baths were encrusted with stucco to give the impression of stonework. This technique was quite common within the structures built during the imperial style of Roman architecture, e.g. the Baths of Constantine, the Basilica Nova, and parts of the Caesarian Bridge. The interior parts of the bath were supported by vaulted ceilings and arches to create curvilinear lines. Note their structural vaulting. It's, they didn't do it to create curvilinear lines, they created it so the roof would stand up. What? <laughs> this, who wrote this? No, it's a, it's a vault because a vault is structurally stable. You can't hold up a ceiling without the vault. That's why they did it, not because they like curves. Anyway. So there's the Euclidean's bath. And looks like the other bath that we want to look at is the Trajan's bath, which we saw earlier in the game, I believe. Yeah, those ones there. So let's go to that entrance, and let's see what we can find out about the bath of Trajan. Um, where's this entrance? Southern? Northern? No. Barracks? No. Ah, uh, not any of those. Hold on. Where is this? Where? Over here? Yes. Cole Viminale. Did we look at this? We didn't look at this, did we? What is this?
And why is this important? Oh, is this like a church? Oh, never mind. Let's go south. And the Baths of Trajan, I believe, is that there. How do we get up to it? How do we get up to those baths? Oh, that way. There's the entrance. All right, the entrance is by the Colosseum. Which does not seem historically accurate, but okay. Also far bigger than the other two, even though the other two are supposed to be bigger. We did go through here as part of the game. One of the missions went through here. Alright, up the giant stairs. And... Uh, baths. If we can find them. This place is massive, look at that. I'm pretty sure the other two baths are supposed to be bigger. But this one is huge. It looks pretty good. So is this thing is that thing part of this as well? I think it is. Okay, so database. Locations. Uh the occlusions baths. Not that. Uh not that. Not those. What was that? Nope, not that. Not that... Where is it? Ah, uh, here we go. Therme di Tria... Traiano? Tra Traiano? As with many of Trajan's projects, it's believed this massive leisure at Bathhouse was designed by Apollodorus. The structure was built atop a section of Nero's ruined Golden Palace and was poetically intended for use by the commoners. In 537, the siege of the Goths destroyed most of the Roman aqueducts and the Terme di Traiano were subsequently abandoned due to the loss of their water supply. Another public works project gone terribly wrong, but I'm sure throwing a few Christians to the lions... What is that supposed to mean? How did it go wrong? The empire collapsed, and the Goths destroyed it. Like, how's that? How's that their fault? <laughs> I don't understand. Like these snarky comments, they don't contribute anything to the game. Um, the Baths of Trajan were a massive thermae, a bathing and leisure complex built in ancient Rome, starting from 104 AD and dedicated during the Kalends. Kalends. What is this? Ah, uh, the call the first days of each month of the Roman calendar. Uh new moon cycle, like why is that? Alright, so it's something to do with Roman religion, I guess. So early in July, one oh nine, commissioned by Emperor Trajan, the complex of baths occupied space on the southern side of the Opian Hill on the outskirts of what was then the main developed area of the city, although still inside the boundary of the Soviet war. The architect of the complex was said to be Apollodorus of Damascus. The baths were being utilized mainly as a recreational and social center by Roman citizens, both men and women. Both men and women, naked, in the baths, and wrestling, and everything. Uh, as late as the early 5th century, the complex seemed to have been deserted soon after as a cemetery dated to the 5th century, which remained in use until the 7th century, has been found in the front of the northern dextra, exedra, my bad. The baths were thus no longer in use at the time of the siege of, the Rome, of Rome by the Goths. Oh, I see. In, three, in 537, with the destruction of the Roman aqueducts, all thermae were abandoned as was the whole of the now waterless Mons Opius. That sucks. Although the Goths knew exactly what they were doing. I mean, if you want to destroy a city, destroy the water supply, you know, and, and people start dying. Uh, location? Pr 
Prior to the construction of the baths, their location on the Opian Hill was occupied by the ornate palace of Nero. After Nero's suicide, subsequent emperors Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian chose to build over this palace with other forms of architecture. Emperor Trajan covered up the last of the palace with a platform upon which the baths were built, because they served as a model for bath complexes built throughout the Roman world during the imperial period. These baths will come to be recognized as a highly notable example of early imperial Roman architecture. The baths were erected on the Opian Hill, a southern extension of the Esquiline Hill, built on a platform that had itself been built over Nero's palace. So he didn't demolish Nero's palace, he just kind of built over it. The bath complex was immense by ancient Roman standards, covering an area of approximately 330 by 215 meters. The complex rested on a northeast to southwest axis, with the main building attached to the northeastern wall. This was contrary to the more widely used north-south axis of many buildings in the vicinity. It is suggested that this unorthodox orientation was chosen by the architects to reduce the ba bathers' exposure to the wind, while also maximizing exposure to the sun. Within the complex, the building was surrounded by a large grassy area. Uh, the baths themselves consisted of pools, including a tibidarium, a caldarium, a frigidarium, and gymnasia, and a podiatria, which is the changing rooms. In addition to the facilities of the baths complex used by the public, there was a system of subterranean passageways and structures used by slaves and workers to service and maintain the facilities. Also underground, the massive cistern surviving today as the city sale, the seven rooms, stored much of the water used in the baths. It was capable of storing no less than 8 million liters. There was also Cerro Exidere on the eastern and western sides of the building. After archaeological analysis performed after excavation in 1997, it is thought that at least one of these exedra served as a sort of library and a holding place for scrolls and manuscripts. Uh, city fresco and mosaics. The archaeological excavations of 1997 led to the discovery of a large, about 10 meters, frescoed bird's eye view of a walled port city. A unique survivor of such a project in a buried gallery or cryptoporticus beneath the baths, a frescoed bird's eye view of a walled port city. Uh, it's under the baths which predated their construction but post-dated Nero's Domus Aurea. Whether it represents the reorganization of an actual port or an idealized one remains an open question. Additionally, the discovery of a 32 feet mosaic was announced in July 2011, with still more to be excavated. In what is believed to be a museum, a place dedicated to the goddesses who inspired the creation of the arts, featuring a nymphaeum, a fountain room. Components of the mosaic identified to date include Apollo, capitals and columns, several muses. Also discovered nearby, another mosaic shows grape harvesting scenes. Um... Grape harvesting is usually associated with winemaking and associated with drunkenness. I, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say that underneath the baths, in what was the old Golden Palace of Nero, there were various shenanigans going on, including wine and nakedness. But who knows, maybe I'm just speculating. So there's the Bath of Trajan. Huge baths where a lot of naked Romans ran around and wrestled. Good times. Okay, so is that is that all the baths that we have to look at? I think it is. So I think the next thing we should go to is the Mausoleum of Augustus. Let me just double check that we've gone through all the baths that we can in the game. Uh, the Circus Maximus, I mean, it's just a blank piece of ground today, so not much to see. Ah, uh, the Esquiline Hill. 
four arches, Temple of Saturn, and wait, what is this? Oh yeah, okay. All right, so I I think you can tell that we've missed some of these things, and I'm not gonna go through every single thing. And if you're interested, you can never look at them, like the the rest of the architecture, historic architecture in Rome. I'm just gonna pick out the ones that I think are important, and I have. And the last one I want to look at is the... is it even here? Is the uh, Mausoleum of Augustus, which doesn't seem to be here. Am I crazy, or is the Mausoleum of Augustus not actually here? Not that one. Not those. No. How is that even possible? To miss this thing twice. But uh, it's not here. That's odd. I mean, it's, it's a thing in game, but there's no mausoleum of Augustus here, and there's also like several missing entries, and I don't understand what those are neither. All right, well, we just walk over there or tunnel over there. If I can remember where the tunnel entrance is, it's not near here, is there? It's kind of further up the hill. How quickly can I get to that? Or should I go somewhere else? No. Alright. It's that way. I mean, you have to kind of keep in mind that, you know, without these public baths, you wouldn't have very many opportunities to bathe because there's no running water inside your home, right? Back in those days. You drew water from fountains, and then, then aqueducts supply water to the fountains, but you don't get running water in the home. And, you know, even if you did, it wouldn't be easy to, to um, heat it. So I mean you can you can clean yourself a little bit at home, but the idea that you know the way, the way that we take showers and baths at home today was something that wasn't really available to the Romans or even to you know medieval Europeans. So like these baths were you know fairly remarkable and fairly important to people's hygiene, you know. All right, Augustus Mausoleum. And after the collapse of the Roman Empire, and all this architecture, I mean, all this infrastructure was, you know, abandoned and not maintained, people just got less clean. <laughs> You know, they just didn't have the opportunity to bathe as much. Which is not a good thing. Alright, so here's the Mausoleum of Augustus. It's a brick cylinder, although... Given all the things we've read up to now, we can guess that it used to be... Marble-clad, with giant statues everywhere, but now there isn't. Because... The Popes stole all of it. All right, so mausoleum of Augustus. So the mausoleum of Augustus, as you can see, there's even more plants on the real thing today. That is a a lot of plants growing on this thing. Kind of ridiculous. The Mausoleum of Augustus is a large tomb built by the Roman Emperor Augustus in 28 BC on the Campus Martius in Rome, Italy. 
A large tomb. Not that large in the game, is it? The mausoleum is located on the Piazza Augusto Imper Imperatore? Oh, the Piazza of Augustus Imperator, okay. Uh, near the corner with Via di Repetta, as it runs along the Tiber. The grounds cover an area equivalent to a few city blocks, and nestled between the Church of San Carlo El Corso and that Museum of Arapaceus. Isn't it Arapaceus? I think it's Arapaceus. Arapaceus. Um, so this thing supposedly is much bigger in real life. Uh, the interior of the mausoleum is no longer open to tourists as looting, time and neglect have stripped the ruins of marble elegance. Uh, even as ruins, it is a dominating landmark on the northern side of the Campus Martius. The mausoleum was one of the first projects initiated by Augustus in the city of Rome, following his victory at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC. The mausoleum was circular in plan, consisting of several concentric rings of earth and brick, planted with cypresses on top of the building and capped, possibly as reconstructions are unsure at best, by a conical roof and a statue of Augustus. So we don't know for sure, maybe conical roof. Vaults held up the roof and opened the burial spaces below. Uh, twin pink granite obelisks flanked the arched entryway, these now stand, one at the Piazza del Esquilino, on the northwest side of the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore, and the other at the Curano Fountain. The completed mausoleum measured 90 meters in diameter by 42 meters in height. 90 meters in diameter by 42 meters in height. 92 meters! in diameter. This thing is tiny in the game. Look at this thing. This is not 92 meters. This is this is at most half as big as the real thing. 92 meters in diameter? Much bigger than this. More than double the size. Uh, that's, that's kind of sad really. A corridor ran from the entryway into the heart of the mausoleum, the mausoleum, or mausoleum, my bad, where there was a chamber with three niches to hold the golden urns enshrining the ashes of the, of the imperial family. Remains buried inside the mausoleum before Augustus include those of Marcus Claudius Marcellus, Marcellus, who was the first to be buried there in 23 BC. Marcus Agrippa in 12 BC, Nero Claudius Drusus in 9 BC, Octavia Minor, the sister of Augustus in 9 or 11 BC, Gaius and Lucius, grandsons and heirs of Augustus, after the emperor himself, the mausoleum hosted the ashes of Livia, Augustus' wife, Germanicus, Agrippa the Elder, Agrippa's daughter Julia Livilla, Nero, Drusus Caesar, Caligula, Tiberius, Ju Drusus Julius Caesar, Nero Claudius Drusus, Antonia Minor, Claudius Britannicus, the embalmed body of Poppaea Sabina, wife of Nero, Julia Domna, and Neva, the last emperor for whom the mausoleum was opened. Holy cow, a lot of people were buried here. During the 14 uh, in 14, during the sack of Rome by Alaric, the pillaging Vis Visigoths rifled the vaults, stole the urns and scattered the ashes without damaging the structure of the building. Um, Lacus Curtius claims, however, that the story of its plundering by Alaric in 410 has no historical foundation, and we know nothing of its destruction. Ah, if you say so. In the Middle Ages, the artificial Tumulus was, a, was fortified as a castle, as was the Mausoleum of Hadrian, which was turned into the Castel San Angelo and occupied by the Colonna family. After the disastrous defeat of the Commune of Rome at the hands of the Count of Tusculum in 1167, the Colonna was, were disgraced and banished and their fortification in the camper was dismantled, thus it became a ruin. Alright, so it was a mausoleum. It got converted into a fortress 
and then it got dismantled again, so that's why it's in such a bad state now. It was not until the 1930s that the site was opened as a preserved archaeological landmark, along with the newly moved and reconstructed Ara Pachias nearby. Uh, the restoration of the Mausoleum of Augustus to a place of prominence featured in Benito Mussolini's ambitious reordering of the city of Rome, which strove to connect the aspirations of Italian fascism with the former glories of the Roman Empire. Mussolini viewed himself especially connected to the achievements of Augustus. Not quite, bro. Not quite, Mussolini. You are not quite Augustus. Seeing himself as a reborn Augustus, ready to usher in a new age of Italian dominance. Not quite. Good try. Um, actually, not a good try. Failed miserably, Mussolini. Uh, Alright, so that's the Mausoleum of Augustus. And I believe I will leave Rome here and end our series of architecture in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. There are more buildings to look at, but nothing that I'm particularly interested in, and you can look it up yourself if you're interested. And uh, alright, so the next game in the series is Assassin's Creed Revelations, which includes the city of Constantinople, which is going to be interesting too. So I'll see you guys there.